go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today, friend of the show, returning guest, Finn Twit, darling by this, <laughs> if I could call you like that, <laughs> Aisha Tariq. She's a financial analyst. Welcome back to the pod. Thank you so much. It's so good to be back. I'm so happy. Ah, it's so much, so much water, right? Has mm-hmm. come back since we've last spoke. Um, you <clears throat> dropped the you dropped the the R word on the last podcast, and now here we are facing a recession. Um, what are the signs that you're seeing? Because if I if I look at the media, the media says no, there might not be a recession, right? And if I look on Twitter, there's it's a whole different story. What what are you saying? Sure, I mean, look, uh, when we spoke last time and we talked about the inversion of the yield curve, um, if I'm being honest, it was something that was on my mind, but it wasn't really something that I expected so soon. Um, but having said that, it looks like we've had the, in, uh, the yield curve invert a couple of times now. So we're mm. like flip-flopping between inversion and not inverting. But um, if you ask me, I think, so we know the technical definition of a recession is having two quarters of the GDP uh, going negative, right? Yes. So we've already had one negative quarter and we're looking at possibly a second one this time. But right. it's not just about the technical definition, right? So yes. um, let's look at what's happening around us, right? Real wages are still negative. Mm-hmm. Um, we see inventory gluts. We're seeing um, retail sales coming down. We're seeing um, personal savings rates coming down. So we're already in a recession. Wages are not catching up to the level of inflation. Mm -hmm. And whether you can, whether you define it technically or not, um, it feels very much like a recession. And more importantly, I think, um, so if you look at the stock market, we've been Mm -hmm. having a steady decline since November. So if you look, um, I think we peaked somewhere around the 19th, 20th of uh, November. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been just a gradual bear market. So I think um, we're very much in a recession Mm. Even if it's not a technical recession. Even if it's not a technical recession. I saw an article this morning. Um, it's basically, it said that more and more consumers, predominantly in the, it was looking at the US, um, um, US citizens, were using credit cards to, to get, you know, the, that little bit towards the end of the month. I mean, that to me is like a clear giveaway that, inflation is very real and people aren't they're make, not making ends meet no absolutely and um, if you look at some of the statistics that i've been looking at in terms of household debt mm-hmm. so not only are we seeing more issuances of credit cards but we are also seeing some delinquencies which is 90 days late Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're seeing delinquencies in mortgage payments as well, which is very interesting because mortgages are the last thing that anybody wants to default on because nobody wants their home taken away from them, obviously. Yes. Um, so, yes, we're looking at uh, credit card balances increasing. We're looking at personal loan balances increasing. And we're looking at some delays in household debt, so both housing and non-housing debt. Yeah, I don't want to put you in a, in, a, in a tough spot. You don't have to answer if you don't. But there's a sense to me, and I think some someone mentioned it this morning, and he said, how can we continue? And I said, sorry, how can we continue to let companies like BlackRock buy all this land and cause, well, not cause, but profit from this housing market? It just, to me, it comes to a point where we have to say something. Look, uh, 
if you're looking at it from an ethical perspective, yeah. yes, perhaps we should say something, but what can you really say? Yeah. They're the ones who have the money. And this is what the Fed has done. So uh, cheap credit, um, ample liquidity, private equity buyers have gone in, they've bought housing yes. markets. I know plenty of people, even here, who have gone into the multifamily properties and in the US, in the UK, and um, they're corporate owners now. So th this is something mm -hmm. that will prevail and it will probably increase. Can the consumer do anything about it? Not really. I mean, America has uh, good laws, I suppose, but I don't think they favor the consumer as much. Okay. Talking about doing something about it, let's talk about the trading aspect of, of, of the recession, what's happening. Um, what, what, in your opinion, what does the recession trade look like? So I think the recession trade is very much, you know, like a late cycle trade, you know, mm. where you have more value stocks. You want to buy stocks that pay dividends, that have strong cash flows, that have pricing power. So if, you, if you're talking about, you know, sectors, you would look at the defensives, you would look at REITs, you would look at healthcare. Mm and uh, perhaps large re retailers like Costco or Walmart, yeah? So, um, and definitely not growth stocks, uh, not stocks that don't have cash flows, and <laughs> yes, yeah. um, not the ones that have uh, declined 80, 90% already. Yeah, well, let's talk about that quickly because I, I posed a question to you earlier this week and I said, is the recession trade getting crowded, right? Because to me, it, it just feels like in 2000 and even going back before 2000, the internet wasn't as connected and interwoven as it is now. It feels like I can climb into an Uber and the, guy, the Uber driver wants, wants to give me stock tips. You know, he wants to, oh, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's like everyone knows. Everyone's talking about, hey, this is a recession. They might not know the technical and implications and everything, but they know the word and they know it's coming. Has this in any way like affected the trading side? So sure, of course. I mean, it, the whole market was crowded, you know, yeah. with, uh, with all the liquidity that we had, as you say, even your Uber driver yeah. was buying stocks, right? So <laughs> it's like there were too many players in the market. But if you notice from January or you know, maybe even February, we've had a lot of money leave the market, right? So we've mm. had a lot of liquidity coming out of the market. And this is not just retail traders, but as well yes. as yes. corporate traders. Yes. Right? So you Sorry, have because everyone loves to give the retail trader the blame. Oh, no, no. I think everybody's running for the hills. Yes. It's not just the retail yes. traders. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, you have people coming out of bonds even. I mean, so it's not, I, I, I think the only thing that's been doing fairly okay still is commodities. Yes. And that too, because of outside factors, it's got nothing to do. I mean, I won't say it's got nothing to do with the stock market, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's got, you know, the, the war and, and yeah, yes, exactly. Supply chain issues and things like that. So... <laughs> Is the recession rate getting crowded? I would think to a certain extent, yes. Because where will people go? I mean, there's some people have to put their money somewhere, right? So yes. you still have the pension funds. You still have the big investment houses. You have the people like BlackRock and all. So they have to put money, Vanguard. They have mm -hmm. to put their money somewhere. Okay. So then the obvious, uh, obvious rotation becomes the defensive place. Mm. And the late cycle plays, as we just discussed. Mm. So, yes, there will be some crowding there. Um, but I think, in general, the whole market has become less crowded. You yes, know? yes, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. The contrarian case being buy now and buy everything because it's going to go up straight away like we had with the COVID correction. What is your what is your take there? Is it a, is it um, is it, it might not be as simple as that, but 
we have a lot of people saying but go out and buy everything because it's going to go up again i see that too and you know what it scares me a little honestly i mean yeah for the last few weeks all i've been hearing is uh, is this the market bottom i mean why are we so obsessed with catching a market bottom it will mm. depend on how you trade right yes so if you're an investor you can always average into a stock mm. and if you're a trader you're only looking for a medium to short term you know kind of view i mean yes. you know better you're a trader yes 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 yeah but the point is it, it, it's sort of like you know donkey from shrek are we there yet are we there yet i mean do we really have to ask this question i i, I don't understand it um you take your view um you take your strategy and you implement it with whatever market there is whether it's the bear market or a bull market or a sideways market it doesn't matter um and there when you when you be sorry but there seems to be this influx of market commentary from people that call themselves investors but they are more commentating with a trading mindset or a trading narrative i'm like you shouldn't even be on these platforms every day or every week because you are you have a five year it's not a kathy wood five year um time horizon that keeps shifting but you're supposed to have a five year time horizon go and do something else but it just to me it says that you just want to be part of the 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 fun and games and you're not really invested is that a fair take look i don't know if they really are invested or yeah. not but i do understand that uh, they 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 want to say something yes. and i'm i'm absolutely with you on this that sometimes it it can get a little misleading as well right mm, so mm. It, because you're looking you're look so for example let's take one of the stocks like docusign okay i like this company a lot last year it was a good company they did a fantastic job but we've seen it go from what 250 all the way to the 60s right and then mm. it recovered a little because people said you know what we've hit the bottom let's start buying yes. it can go, go any lower Yes. Yesterday they had earnings and it's back down to the 60s. Yes. So stocks can go to zero. Yes. We need to understand this. Okay? Um and so people I think people need to understand that there's always a risk. There's always a risk of entering the market. So the only way to actually look at this is actually to analyze stocks properly mm-hmm. or you read a chart. Okay. Don't flip flop. Don't okay. flip flop from being an investor yeah. or yeah. a trader. Yeah. Pick, right? pick, pick one and 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 do that. Don't Absolutely. don't mingle the two with each other. They don't exactly. Well. What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion on the um on on the recession trade in terms of let's say the 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 short to the medium term if you're looking to partake in the in in this uh, current financial market. So look something that I've been saying is that the Fed will not backstop the stock market. I'm sure yeah. you saw my tweet. Yeah yeah yeah. Um yeah. So when I say this what I mean to say is the Fed will do anything in their power right now to control inflation. Mm-hmm. And unemployment is low enough for them to take drastic measures. Yes. Okay? Which means they're not too concerned about where the stock market goes. Yes. Okay? okay. So we could go much lower. So this bear market could be quite a protracted bear market and we could go much lower. So I think when we're looking at when we're faced with this, I think we need to consider that we could go lower for the next 12 to 18 months even. And if that's the case, I would say you would want to stay away from stocks like this. Uh yes. stocks that are high beta, stocks that are not yielding any kind of um dividends and you know so on and so forth. And if you decide to go into growth stocks um be ready to be beaten down further do you think before i let you leave do you think that kathy wood has the kiss of death and she actually she's took over the moniker of the inverse kramer because i'm looking at some picks and i'm saying whoa this 
You know, but because as you know, it happens, right? It's like when you lose that Midas touch, it's very hard to get back. And it's here. It's it sort of gets into to your head. And and it's just funny because a lot of people look at these stuff and they pick up on it. And it's like, yeah, this is this is becoming really interesting. Look, I think it's very sad. I mean, she she has a great view. I think she's very smart. I actually mm. admire mm. her a lot. She's she's a brave lady. But having said that, I think her execution has been very poor. Mm. Um, she picked some great names to begin yes. with, but she yes. kept on buying at the highs. She should have seen this coming. And if she's still thinking about the five-year or 10-year, whatever time horizon uh, for uh, deflation and uh, innovation and all of that, then she should stick with her plan. But it, it feels to me like she is uh, constantly rotating and doubling down on her mistakes. Um, so again, I think execution here is very poor. Um, I, I don't know who is doing this. Yeah. I doubt it would be her. No. Um, but I don't think her analysts or her portfolio managers are very uh, astute. Well, they, they should hire you, by the way. I would in a heartbeat if I were them. <laughs> Final question from... Yeah, sorry? <laughs> I don't know if I would accept. <laughs> Whoa, shots fired. Uh, Final question <laughs> from Twitter. And I guess we have to talk about it. Fintwit wants to know if you are creating mayhem on Twitter by running alternative accounts. <laughs> you see what I did well, there? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I see what you did there. But you know what? Um, so apparently there are a couple of people and these are guys on Twitter who are mm. masquerading as women. Yes. So you know what? I felt kind of left out and I thought, you know, let me try something like that. <laughs> So I decided to create this alter ego. <laughs> you yeah. have just unleashed. This, this is going to unleash a can of worms because there is <laughs> a rising belief that there is, and I'm not going to name names, but there that you are actually someone else and that you are controlling alternative um, accounts. And we'll leave it there. <laughs> Aisha, thank you so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. If the listeners want to connect with you, where can they do that? Uh, on Twitter, of course, my first name, last name together, uh, or I have a sub tag as well, or on LinkedIn, as you very well know. She only takes a week to reply on LinkedIn. Just go follow hey. her. Just go follow <laughs> her. Just go follow her on Twitter. That's that's the much better. Twitter. That's the fun Twitter, darling. Aisha, thank you so much for joining me, to thank our you listeners. So much. Peace, love, and prosperity. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.